Welcome everyone. In this recording, we will provide an overview of our South Dakota JS340 cover crop worksheet or job sheet. We will identify the changes made to the cover crop species and properties found in Table 1. We'll explain the recommended and prepared mix tabs found in the worksheet, provide an overview of the worksheet functions, and demonstrate how to use the worksheet. We will also demonstrate the new cost estimate and vendor tabs, and we'll discuss seed tags and practice certification. Before we go into all the functions of the cover crop worksheet, I'd like to briefly explain the worksheet purpose and how to use it. Essentially, the cover crop worksheet documents and all the requirements found in the 340 cover crop standard. The seed mix plan must fix, stop, or prevent the identified resource concern from occurring. That resource concern must be listed as a practice purpose in the standard. Criteria in the practice standard tells us what must be done to solve the identified problem. Because all purposes or problems cannot be solved the same way, additional criteria found in the standard explains what must occur to treat each specific resource concern. More than one resource concern can be addressed with the same mix, provided the additional criteria for each purpose is met. Sometimes the producer has additional reasons for selecting a conservation practice. Salinity, although not specifically identified as a purpose, may be improved by addressing soil health or soil moisture use efficiency. Management considerations like haying or grazing are not practice purposes for this standard. And although they may provide some financial benefits to the producer, they may not meet the standard requirements. It is very important to keep in mind cover crop management cannot adversely affect the resource concern being treated. So with that, let's um, go into the changes and functions of, this, of the worksheet. Um, next, Stacy will talk about changes and additions to table one. All right, hello, I'm Stacy Turgeon, conservation agronomist in the Pier area um, out of the Chamberlain Field Office. And I am gonna go over the table one changes and additions that we did that also show up in the cover crop tech note that was also released in October of 2020. So first of all, we did reorganize um, the cover crop species. We actually removed some of the species like tall wheatgrass and white clover. Um, since those weren't used very often, those were removed. Um, we also changed the name of Ethiopian cabbage is now African cabbage. Um, line number eight right there. Um, we added some species. We added collards, which got put in with kale. We added fava beans and balanza clover. And then the next thing that we did is we separated the millets. We put hay and proso millets separate due to their different seeding rates. And then we combined the mustards. So there is only one mustard entry now. So you can see the hay millet is only 15 pounds full seeding rate and the proso is 25. All right, the next thing that we did is we added an average cost per pound. And so we contacted different companies and they responded to our request. Most of the species had three different responses. Um, so this average cost can be used um, as a general comparison. Um, just remember that this may not reflect the correct or current conditions um, or cost, you know, due to shortages of seed and such. Um, next thing we did is we added the seeds per pound column. And that is over further here. So it's column U. And this is to help determine if the species should be combined or separated due to seed size. Um, you know, some examples are fava beans, um, you know, aren't with dry edible beans, um, proso millet versus hay millet, um, 
you know, depending on the seed size and that, you might not want to combine them and keep them separate if they have the capabilities of seeding them with the drill in separate boxes. All right, the next one is the winter survival column. We thought that this was important to put in here. It's column Q. So you're going to have a yes or a no or an S. And so the S would be um, considered sporadic. So under the right conditions, it could overwinter um, or potentially escape. Otherwise, the yes means it, it does survive and the no means it doesn't. Another column that we added was the shade tolerance. So it's column V. Um, this column can be used to determine um, which species would be best suited for a seeding that was going to be done in standing crop canopy or interseedings. The other one we did is we changed the name. So in the previous table one, it was capture, recycle, redistribute nutrients in the soil profile. And now we just called it scavenge nutrients. Um, and this column represents a species that will use sur surplus nutrients to reduce the risk of those nutrients being leached below the root zone or lost from the soil surface. The attract beneficial insects column was actually replaced with table two. So, <clears throat> excuse me. This is also included in the tech note two. So you can look at the different type of cover that you might be interested in developing or food and whether or not they um, attract bees or predator um, parasitoids. And so then the species are all in here and labeled appropriately. All right, one of the other things that we did is we kind of changed um, some of the goods, fares, and poor ratings based on how we have seen these cover crops perform um, across the state over the last, you know, 10, 12 years. Um, so be aware of that. Some of the species that you may have thought had a good or fair rating could have changed. So familiarize yourself with those. And so now I'm going to show you how to use the filter options, which is really really um, nice. So if you see this little drop down arrow here, you can go down here and unselect all. And if you were looking for species that were just good or fair for increasing soil organic matter, click OK. And it's going to just bring up the species that are good or fair for that particular resource concern. And there's this nice clear all filters over here. Um, takes you back to what table one was before. So let's try another one. Let's look at what we're gonna do as interceding here. So let's go to shade tolerance. And we just want the ones that are, <clears throat> excuse me, fair and good. Okay, and it will bring the species over that are fair and good. So this should help you put together some of your seed plans. All right, well up next is Jason Miller and he is gonna go over the recommended cover crop mixes and some prepared mixes. Okay, hi, this is Jason Miller. I'm a conservation agronomist with NRCS based out of the Peer Field Support Office. I'm gonna be covering a section in uh, job sheet 340, uh, a couple of tabs down here at the bottom. This is the main page that gets pulled up here, this cover crop worksheet. But I wanna comment on a couple of the tabs down at the bottom. I will first cover the recommended cover crop mix tab. This tab was in the previous versions of this job sheet. It hasn't changed a lot. There was a few changes made 
most notably would have been the Ethiopian cabbage name here would have been changed to African cabbage. That was just from a standpoint of Ethiopian being a variety of African cabbage. So we wanted to capture the, the, main, the main species there, which is African cabbage. Um, this, this template was, was created uh, years ago, and it was really meant to create as an overview of, of looking at resource concerns that you found out in the field or that the producer indicated to you that he wanted to treat with a cover crop. And as you scroll down through here, you see we have one for compaction surface and subsurface, et cetera, et cetera. What we also have in this table are more broad categories. So each, basically each crop is broken into a crop type. And all this is explained in the, the cover crop tech note starting on page 28. Um, cool season grasses, your oats, barley, wheat, cereal, cereal rye, triticale, annual rye grass. All these species are broken down into individual classes. And the reason I set it up this way was more or less to handle those situations where from year to year, you may get a spike in certain cover crop species and you're able to substitute in there various species that would still fit this cover crop type. Um, and we also have a percent of ranges listed, uh, identified for each of these crop types here. But one of the more common ones would probably be your organic matter or soil health um, mixture. And you see here, we have several different species and classes here. So you're looking at more of a, maybe a, a little bit larger mix than you would have maybe for some other purposes. So with that, uh, and you're able to actually see these, so I guess Mark will explain that, how you can actually pull up this table and pull it over to your other computer screen and be able to see when you're picking out or creating a, a new mix. What we also created, or what Mark created, was a, an additional tab down here called Prepared Mixes. This tab is going to allow the, the field office to really fine tune maybe some real common mixes out there. And again, let me scroll down to somewhat of a more common one, increased soil, organic matter, et cetera. Um, we have here, you're able to actually modify this list right in, in here to tailor to your particular county. So if you wanted to change from oats to another cool season broadleaf, such as barley, it would, it would allow you to change that right here. You can also modify, I believe, this mixture here if you wanted to change the percent of the So there are several different example ones that are already set up for your area or for for the state. And you can go in here and fine tune fine tune these further for your particular county. I also wanted to comment there will be some additional items down here where you can create your own mix. And we have three different options here. There's a local mix in here that we already created that we'll be using as far as part of this tutorial. And here's where you can create your own particular one. You'll have to remember what this 11 and 12 mixtures are um, when you get to the main page there. Again, all these are in the tech note 16 that was sent out. Um, and I believe this is going to create some more flexibility and for you creating your specific mixes. So next on the list will be Mark Washichek preventing, uh, presenting an overview of the spreadsheet functions. Mark? When you open the South Dakota job sheet 340, you will open it to the cover crop worksheet, and that's where you'll put your information in for your particular cover crop that you're planning. And so I've already entered some of the information, the producer name and phone number, the field office name and phone number. Uh, you wanna enter this information, especially the phone numbers and the office names because they're carried over to the vendor uh, sheet, and that gives the vendor opportunity to call someone if there's a question about filling the order or about 
substitutions. So that's an important thing. Uh, up, you can put in the conservation district and the plant practice purpose. There's a drop down there for you to select from uh, the purposes in the standard. So you should put in the program that you're planning for if there is one and for CSP just to show you that example there's actually a second uh, box to fill out which enhancement that you're completing so I'm just putting that one in for an example um, then next thing you what we want to take a look at here is that uh, we have a box that's optional um, a, to select a prepared mix and that's basically a selection based on the purpose that you're trying to accomplish. And in this example, I used soil health and organic matter uh, is my purpose to increase those. And so I'm going to pick number two, increase uh, the organic matter. It gives me a warning that it's going to delete all the plan and apply data that I previously entered. So I'm saying, OK, yes, that's fine, because it's going to prepare a new plan with species and percent. And so if I already entered a whole bunch of stuff here in the plan section and even in the applied section, it will delete it and it will now plan the new um, prepared mix based on my selection. So that's the way that works. I want to go back for a second and remind you that there are red triangles in some cells that actually give you more direction, instruction, uh, tips and so on. And so Take a look at those. If there's a red triangle, it's probably telling you something that uh, could be helpful to you. So let's take a look at the print button before we get too far. Once you uh, get what you want uh, completed in the plan or the plan and the application sections, you can print uh, any one of these sheets out that, that I've got listed here. Cover crop worksheet, the one we're on now, cost estimate, a vendor sheet, mixes, prepared mixes, and so on. Just check the box next to the one you want or the ones you want. They can be multiples. And then you can print preview and you can print directly without previewing. The preview lets you preview and then there's a button there that you can click to print uh, also. So uh, use that in either way. Uh, pretty handy option for you for when you get to printing these. So let's build a little bit of a plan here for this prepared seeding mix for increasing soil organic matter. Uh, you'll notice that it put the species and percents in, but it didn't complete uh, any of the rest of the worksheet basically. Um, what we need to do is tell it what kind of seeding equipment we're going to use because it'll calculate a different rate based on whether I use a drill or broadcast the seed. In this case, I'll choose drill. So now it knows the rate that we want to plant. We need to tell it how many acres we're going to plant. I'm going to choose 44 in this particular case. And once it knows that, it can calculate the, the uh, total seed that re is required. And so you'll see uh, that that works pretty slick and easy. You can then put your crop history in um, that makes a difference on as far as herbicide carryover, and you can read that statement when you're using the tool. So let's take a look at uh, how does this view recommended mixes. I'm going to actually go back and say, yeah, I'm going to build my own mix here, and so I'm going to not have a prepared mix, so I put it on a blank, or a I could delete that cell also. Just hit the delete key. It'll, it'll, it'll uh, erase all the information I had. So let's take a look at how view recommended mixes works. It pulls up a little table uh, from TechNote 16. And if I want to build a mix based on uh, eliminating compaction, here's my guidelines uh, from TechNote 16 and so on so forth for nu nutrient scavenging for sp utilization of spring soil moisture. So you can use this and then you can come over here and actually make selections and use the spreadsheet uh, as you view this. And you can actually print this out so you can have it at your desk too. Uh, and when you're done with it, you can move it around, you can close it down. So that's that's the way that works. Um, I want to show you then that we can add 
if if your species that you want to apply isn't in the list, this comes from Tech Note 16, you'll notice an odd one at the end there. I'm going to show you that I already added one. But the way it works is it pops up uh, the table one, and you can't uh, even select any of the information in table one, but you can use the um, filters, and we'll show you that in a little bit. But here I've added, I don't know that industrial hemp will ever be a, a uh, cover crop, but I used it as an example and I made these numbers up. But here's where you enter your numbers. The blue cells, you can enter your own species. And once you do that, you click the return button and you will be back to uh, the cover crop worksheet and you'll have the opportunity to select that uh, species that you entered and if you pick a percentage that you're going to apply it'll calculate the pounds that you need so that's the way that works i'm going to not use that in this example so um yeah the other thing i want to show you is is basically kind of how that uh you how you can edit the prepared mixes up here. I want to show you that uh, button. So if I go there, here are the prepared mixes. Here's the purpose and the species. And in Tech Note 16, it says like, for example, hay millet, you can use also proso millet. So you could change that to proso millet here. And then number two would pop over there when you selected it with proso millet in. If that's what you're going to use in your county most of the time, that would be um, the way to to use this is to come in here and change this and save it and then use it. And then I'll show you that you can make your own local mixes. And down here at 11, here's the first one, local mix. There's three of these that you can enter in. I've already entered the species in and the percents, so I didn't have to do that right now, but I've already done it and I've saved it. So I have a local mix number 11 that has these species in it. So I'm going to go back to, and this is a return button uh, all the way down along the side. So I can just click return when I'm done editing or adding. And it pops me back to the cover crop worksheet. And if I, oops, if I select number 11 from my list, local 11, it says I'm gonna Eliminate, delete the uh, plant and applied data, that's fine. It pops that set of species and that percents, those percents into the planned uh, cover crop worksheet. And so just one other thing I want to point out here, I guess, is this 23%. Just make sure that uh, you do understand that that's 23% of NRCS's full seeding rate. Okay, and we'll get into that uh, the difference between that and when we check out a practice and how uh, seed tags list percent of the seed. We'll get into that pretty deep here in a little bit. So next we have Valerie presenting information about the cost estimate and the vendor tab. Valerie Ryder, I am the agronomist out here based out of the Rapid City field office, and I'm gonna talk about the cost estimator for planning purposes and the vendor sheet. So the this top part is the information you actually filled out in the cover crop job sheet, this first worksheet there, um, name, oops, um, name of the producer, the field office who planned it, phone numbers, and all of that. Um, this is just an average of the information we got from table one that we'll use in this. Um, it can depend, change depending on which dealer you actually price it with, and then um, the supply and demand Sometimes some, one year something's really popular or another year something else may be popular. So it is good to get a request from the actual vendor when you decide this is what makes you actually want, but we're using this for planning purposes so that if 
you have a producer that's worried about cost, we can give them an idea of how much it would cost before. And so they can go to their bank or just have a knowledge of what it's going to cost. So this is the seeding mix we used, Mark used in his um, example. So it has the percentages here, average cost, the pounds that were needed per acre. Um, so that makes the cost, and then it was times 44 acres. So that's the pounds needed for 44 acres, and that's the total cost of the brassica hybrids for that 44 acres, and then it gives the cost for each one. Um, then we give a bunch of rows in case you have a really diverse mix, and then it gives the total cost per acre down here. Um, it's 11 pounds, um, cost $14, and then for 44 acres, we need 491 pounds, and the cost is 600. 23. So just gives the producer an idea of what they're doing. Okay. Um, then we'll go to the vendor sheet. This is the actual worksheet you'll have the producer give to the vendor they select to get the cover crop seed from. So this also has all the um, information that the other one did that comes from the first page name producer of the producer the field office who the planner was so that's good to know who planned it so that there needs to be a substitution or there's a question about why it was planned a certain way they knew who to contact um and that approval has to be prior made it to the producer putting it in the ground um, they can either um, use a variety or use common seed. Um, each bag must have a seed. We must get a seed tag at the end from what they purchased and the amount that they purchased and follow the state seed laws, which Eric will cover more in depth of that. Um, so this has the mix again, and then the percentage, percentage of the full seeding rate, um, the pounds per acre, acres to be seeded total and total pounds. And then it also has um, a percent by weight. Um, so just depending on the size size that kind of changes it from this 10% to the 6%. Um, these are smaller seeds, so the weight is less in this mix than larger seeds like millet. They're they're heavier, so they're a larger percent of the mix by weight. Um, But, and then you'll see they both equal 100%. So the, one of the big things also that in, we have in the tech guide is now that we require the, um, to be at least 85% viable, and if it's not 85% viable germination, then you're required to do it by pure live seed pounds. And it talks about pure live seed is purity times German or total viability and yeah it requires each species in the mix not this mix as a whole but each species in the mix must be greater than 85 percent and that's all I have and next we will go back to Mark So after I've completed the plan section and have all the species and percents, pounds that I am going to need with for my 44 acres, when the seeding is done, I can take and complete the applied section. 
And so the first thing I want to do there is use the copy species from planned if they were identical. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to show you that um, this would then delete all the applied data that I previously entered. OK. Um, it actually is telling me then how to complete the applied section. So just a little reminder, if a mix was applied and one seed tag lists all the species in the mix, then I'm going to enter the bulk pounds applied and the acres planted in J and L51. So I'm going to enter it here and here. So really it's saying, did I have a, a mix? Did they pre-mix it for me? Is it, do I have one seed tag with all the species listed? That's one way that cover crops get sold. And the other way is you could buy individual species and you'd have a seed tag for each species. So if you had five species, you'd have five seed tags, each listing the purity and germination for that species. So that's another way that they sell it. If that's the case, then what you're going to do is you're going to enter the bulk pounds that you bought and applied and actually got seeded in the field in rows 53 through 67, whatever species you have. So here I'd have five numbers in here in the bulk pounds. And then you're going to put the acres in L51 again, OK? And you need to enter the applied method also up here in N51. So that's just reminding you how to fill this out, OK? So in our example, what we had was a seed tag, and I'm going to use uh, this seed tag right here. And it's a real one. Uh, it happened. And there's your five species. And they're the five I've got listed there. And you can see I've given an example of how you would complete this uh, with your five species. And the purity in this particular case is the percent in the mix, not necessarily the purity of a species like you would find on a single seed tag. So by weight, this is 6.64% brassica hybrids. So we're going to go back here. And I've actually already put these numbers in a place where I can copy them so I don't have to take quite as long to enter them. And that's all I'm doing now. The purity for each one of these is not purity necessarily. It is the percent in mix. OK, so I've got that entered. And there's a little red triangle that tells you what you're putting in here uh, depending on the seed tag that you have, the type of seed tag. So then the germination, if it's 85% or greater, I'm not going to enter anything here because Tech Note 16 says that if it's 85% or greater, it's going to treat it just like it was 100%. And so that's what this spreadsheet does. If it's less than 85, I'm going to put the percent in here. So you will see in my seed tag examples, every one of these germinations is 90%. So I don't have to put anything in there uh, in that example. Um, so we have a bulk pounds of seed. And what I'm going to say is we bought 500 pounds of this seed. You can see from my plan that I needed 491.92 pounds of PLS of this seed to come out to our standard. So I'm by, I bought 500 pounds, OK? I seeded 44 acres, just like the plan. So I'm trying to match it up as much as I can in this example. And my seeding method was drill. All right. So it actually then makes the calculation based on this 500 pounds of the mix that was these percents in the mix. And what it also does for you is calculates the percent of NRCS full seeding rate. Total was 102%. And so I actually met my requirements in that particular case of being over 100% of the uh, planned requirements. So let's go one step further and let's say just to show you how this works that and I'm, I'm going to pop over here to the seed 
hashtag examples again. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. There's an example where he at, where the individual added. Um, some oats. Bin run oats, OK? So then they need to get a uh, test on the bin run oats. And here in this particular case, they got a, it's a purity test and a germination test. So you can see the numbers, I don't know if you can or not down here, but they are here, 99.47% purity. And we're gonna say you put in 300 pounds of this, okay? So we're gonna go back here and the germination on this particular one is 95%. So I don't have to put anything in the germination column. If it was less than 85, I'd have to put something in there. So 99.47 and 300 pounds. So I'm going to select oats. And you'll notice that I'm putting a pound figure in this column. That's because I have one species with one test, uh, and that's how you handle that. And you can have a mix and a single species, and that's why I'm showing you this example. That actually, he really only put on uh, 298 pounds of seed. That comes out to about 9.7% of a full seeding rate of NRCS. So now we're up to 110% full seeding rate. So I just wanted to show you how that works if you're going to add um, bin run oats or if you were to add some soybeans or something on that order uh, that you got to get a test. And Eric, I think will get into that quite a bit more here in uh, the next presentation. So uh, that's basically how that works. I do want to show you this, that these percents have really nothing in common with these percents up here. So this percent here is the percent by weight in the mix. If I have these species and the total, I'm going to, I'm going to delete my oats for right now simply because I want to show you this, how this uh, works. So the seed that I have total is 496 pounds, okay? And this 6%, 6.64%, that percent times the 496 pounds will equal the pounds of the brassica hybrids I have in this mix, okay? So it's the percent of the total weight of the mix ends up being these brassica hybrid seeds. Up here, this percent is 10% of NRCS's full seeding rate. We say you should put on seven pounds. 10% of that is seven tenths of a pound. Total different calculation, these percents don't relate to these percents. However, I will get you back to percent of NRCS full seeding rate with this spreadsheet by making a calculation here when we're done that this 6% on these 44 acres with this 33 pounds ends up being 10.8% of our NRCS full seeding rate. So you can see there is a comparison, but it's not in this column, it's in the last column. Okay. So I'd like to show you one other thing, and that is that the calculation of the percent of NRCS full seeding rate is based off of, of course, the bulk seed that was planted and the acres it was planted on, but also the seeding method that was used. So right now the calculation is based off of the fact that he drilled the seed. And if that is changed, the spreadsheet automatically redoes the calculation to come up with the percent of NRCS full seeding rate for broadcast seed. So you don't have to do anything. You just have to make sure you've got the right application method uh, selected here. And in the end, 
we're only at 67% of a full NRCS seeding rate if you broadcast it. However, if they drilled it, you're at 102.2. So you can see that that makes a difference and you need to have the correct actual applied seeding method uh, selected. Um, so then the certification part um, down here, I just want to show you how this works and they'll get into it uh, quite a bit more, but there's a guide to certification, okay? It's a little red triangle. So you need to read that and it walks you through the steps when you're gonna uh, record certification and which method you're gonna use to certify the practice needs to be recorded on the application section down here. So it basically says that you always start with the certification process for um, the seed tag. That's the thing we just went through. We were 101% of our planned rate of NRCS's full seeding rate. And so basically what we what we were into is where it says, if the seeding rate does not meet, excuse me, um, if applied seed plant planting date method meet the conservation practice standard uh, and the total seed applied meets 100% or more of the NRCS full seeding rate, then I'm gonna check the yes box and indicate that it was the seed tag method. So what that means is I'm gonna say yes here and I'm going to indicate that it, the method I used was a percent of full seeding rate, and then it lets me enter the data in here. It's 101.2%, 100, and I did the field check, which you need to do uh, according to the standard. Is uh, I did a field check on, you know, you put the date in. So that's the way that works. If in fact it doesn't meet that, then you would select one of the other methods and then then it's asking you for a number of plants and so on and so forth so that is the way that works you can always put your comments down here if it doesn't meet or even if it meets you can put comments down here you can uh say i've you know attached a photo of it of the field or whatever so that is the way all of that is set up to work next we have Eric Barsness, and he's going to discuss the the worksheet and how you use various seed tags and going in, and he's going to go into the practice certification part of this a little deeper. Eric? Well, hello, everyone. Thank you to this section of the recording. Uh, my name is Eric Barsness. I'm the agronomist over in the Brookings area, and I'm going to go through a couple things on our job sheet for you today. Uh, I wanted to start out kind of the overlay or the overall um, layout of this job sheet. Um, there's a few things you need to fill out at the top, and uh, one good reference here is the the Cover Crop Tech Note 16. So that can there's a link right here in the in the Tech Note where you can or in the job sheet that'll take you right to the Tech Note. Otherwise, all Tech Notes are found in eFOTOG under Section One Tech Notes. So you can get it on the on eFOTOG or you can get get it right through this link right here. And that tech note is actually going to be a really good reference as you're going through the certification process of uh, cover crop. It's going to be pretty handy when you're planning um, the cover crop practice as well. So we got the tech note right there. Um, there's a couple other parts I wanted to point out within this job sheet. Um, there's a crop history section of, of this uh, job sheet and the current crop re refers to the crop that was growing in the same basically crop season that you're going to plant the cover crop. So in this example that I have pulled up here, the producer grew oats uh, this growing season. He harvested the oats. Now he's going to come back and he's going to seed a cover crop uh, following the harvest of those oats. So that's what's referred to as a current crop. The previous crop would have been grown the year before the oats were grown because we want him to evaluate his herbicide program for both the oats and the previous year in this example, the producer grew soybeans before he grew the oats. So that's the two crops that we want him to evaluate his herbicide uh, history on to see if there's any carryover issues um, potentially for the cover crop or if there's any grazing issues that he needs to be concerned of uh, with um, on there. 
And this the herbicide section, there's a pretty good paragraph within that Tech Note 16, and that uh, begins on page 11 of that Tech Note. So you can um, jump right to that, that section to review some herbicide history. Um, so with that, I will go into a little bit about the seed tags on um, and when you're evaluating the seed tags to complete this job sheet. So there's a tab down here at the bottom. You come down here to seed tag examples. And here you can see a handful of seed tag examples um, that can be referred to when you're trying to complete the job sheet. Uh, you, you get questions. Um, questions may come up when you're trying to complete this section on how to fill this out. And I actually have a few notes that I've completed um, that I want to refer to. So I'm going to drag this uh, screen over here so you can see this very clearly and see what I'm talking about here. So number one, we want to collect the CTAG information and complete the applied section of the job sheet. Um, probably prior to going to the field and evalu evaluating these cover crop plantings um, for a couple different reasons. We want to have some of this data with us when we get to the field so we know what we're looking at, looking for. We want to know what he was supposed to plant, what he did actually get planted. And we're going to get that from the seed tag. And this is one example of, of various ways that we see seed tags come in um, to our offices. So in this example here, the producer had a premix. All these uh, cover crop species were already blended together in uh, a premix from one of the seed companies. And pretty much every seed company that I've worked with has a set number of these premixes that they uh, have available for producers. So this could come in from a variety of any of the seed vendors out there. Uh, when, a, when a seed tag is provided to you this in this fashion, you can follow these blue areas to figure out how to fill this out. You're just going to fill out the the species selection, then you're going to come over here and it's listed under the purity uh, column in the seed tag and you're going to put that in the purity or the percent in the mix. So these are already in decimal format so you don't have to do a, a 0.64, you just simply type them in right off the seed tag. Um, if the germination is less than 85%, you will also include that in this column here. And then the biggest uh, part that you need to do is you have to get a, a invoice from the producer or some documentation that shows how many pounds of seed were purchased. And then you got to confirm that with the producer that those number of pounds that he purchased was seeded on how many acres. So this spreadsheet will do some math for us and it will calculate out the percent of an NRCS full seeding rate based on this information the percent in the mix, the total number of, of pounds that was purchased, and then the number of acres those were planted on. And a good check with uh, with all this stuff is when you're visiting with the producer and you're collecting this information, always ask them what the the drill actually got seeded. You know, he set the drill to, you know, 10 pounds per acre, but he, that when he got all said and done, it was actually more like 11.3 that actually got seeded. So we want to know the actual seeding that the drill got put out there. So that's a good check for you guys um, to confirm that with the producer, figure out what he set the drill at and then what it would confirm what actually got drilled out there. Um, in this example here, uh, all the numbers calculated out and he was over the 100% uh, percent required um, based on the cert on certifying the practice, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. So this would be all that we need to do in this uh, C tag example. Now, another way that C tags often come to our offices, um, not in a premix, but maybe what we call a custom mix. So we worked with the producer. We said uh, to meet the purpose of your planting, you need uh, a handful of different species. So the seed company went to each individual bag in their warehouse and they dumped uh, those seeds in and they made the mix for the producer based on the number of acres he needed to seed or wanted to seed. So in this example, uh, maybe I can blow that up a little bigger. Um, each seed uh, species in the mix has its own seed tag. So we've got your Fessex rape seed. We've got some purple top turnips and we got radish on here and each one has its own seed tag information. So in this example, um, we have the purity on the, on the seed tag so we can type that in for each one of these species and then we have the germination also listed on here and you can, uh, you can type that in. That's in this column here, the germination uh, is, is 90 for the purple top turnip. Uh, it's 85 for the radish. So you're going to put the purity and the and the germ in there if it's less than 85%. If it's greater than 85%, then we don't even need to put it in there. There's nothing, no calculations that are going to happen. So you don't need to, don't need to enter it in that case. So 
All right, where am I at? So here we are here. Now we know that how much seed was, was uh, purchased based on those seed tags. And then we need to come back to the invoice um, from the producer, invoice details here, to know how many pounds of each of these species. Because th these seed tags are just a 50 pound bag of each of these species that the, the seed company used. Now we're gonna use the invoice to calculate how many pounds of each of those species actually got put in there. And so now we can put that right in the, the bulk seed individual species column. We don't need to know the, the total pounds because the, the calculations will get done based on each individual species. So we'll calculate that, uh, enter that in the spreadsheet. We'll calculate that all out for us. We always need to put the, the number of acres that actually got planted that we're gonna certify. We're gonna enter that in this column or this cell here. And then I should go back and say, we also need to make sure that the, the, the method of seeding is, is entered right here. It's either broadcast or drilled. In this case, uh, this example, uh, the seeding was broadcast. And here's some documentation by an invoice that says exactly how many acres got done. It was aerial seeded by a, a custom applicator, and he seeded a couple different fields, a couple different number of acres there. Add those two fields up. This was our total number of acres we got done. And then we got our percent of a, of a seeding put in here. So in this case, you did not make the 100%. So we have a few different options I'm going to get into on the certifying uh, the, the cover crop standard as well in a little bit. Um, here's another seed tag that often comes in for these custom mixes. So here we have the individual species. We have the percent in the mix, which we don't really need to do unless the germ is less than 85. There's the purity, the germ, hard seed, and so forth. But we can come over here as long as the, the germ is 85, we can uh, we can put the total bulk pounds in just like we did up above here for each of those species. So that's another uh, common or popular seed tag example that you can use to com complete this when each individu individual species is provided like that. Uh, there's another example as I scroll down here. A third example that uh, you might see, again, uh, the cover crops came in by individual species, kind of put together as a custom blend. So this in this example, you can just follow the blue areas and arrows and read through here like we did before. The percent is actually percent by weight in the mix. Uh, so we're going to put that percent in the mix in that column there. We're going to double check the germination on the individual species within the seed tag itself. And anyone, any species that are less than 85%, we're going to put the germ in here. And then it will do the math for us to calculate the percent of seeding rate once we fill in the total bulk pounds and the number of acres that actually got planted. Again, these, these numbers come from the, the invoice that's provided by the producer or, um, or by the, the vendor. So we need to get that information from them to be able to complete this. this the, the seed tag is, is not enough by itself because we don't know how many pounds of seed or how many acres uh, was planted. And again, double check the, uh, the um, seeds planted per acre that the drill was set at or what the aerial uh, pilot if he provided that. Some of these seed tags will actually give us a, a, a recommended seeding rate and that's why this is important. We can double check that that matched the, the seed tag when it says to seed at a, at a certain rate. Um, there's one more example here as I scroll down that I want to go over with you guys. There's a fourth example. So we, we had the, the pre-mix that the producer um, had uh, purchased and then we're going to enter all that information just exactly the same as we did in example one. But in this this time, the producer added some bin run seed that he had uh, at his own farm. So he had some oats that were that he wanted to include in this mix to get a little bit more grass in his uh, in his in his cover crop blend. So in this case, when we have bin run uh, seed, we need to make sure that the producer had a seed test done on that. Uh, so that we can get the germ uh, germination off the seed test. So here's what a seed test would look like. There's a number of different places they can get um, these seed seed tests done. And from my understanding, they take about two weeks to complete and roughly $50 probably would be a, a rough estimate um, for a seed test to get done. So in this example here, this was done at South Dakota State University seed testing lab. And the information that we need from, from this uh, seed tag is example four here it is all right we need to know um the germination the viable seed 
And we're going to put those in it. We're going to put the percent. Once the math is done off the seed tag, this 99.47, that's the number that we're actually going to enter in to the job sheet. You can just follow these blue arrows whenever you have questions or concerns on what number goes where. So that blue arrow just followed it back up and made sure that it, if it was over 85 percent, um, we don't need to enter anything in the germination column. But if it was below 85 percent, that's where we're going to enter that there. Um, since this example, it was over 85 is all we did was put the the total viable seeds in this column here and the spreadsheet did the math for us to calculate that out. And so that's how we would add that um, bin run seed to our um, applied section of our cover crop job sheet. Um, if you got any questions on that, you can contact one of your local agronomists and we can help you through it, but make sure that they uh, they get that seed test. And like I said, usually about two weeks, uh, it takes the seed testing lab to run those tests. So make sure they think ahead or plan ahead when they're when they're operating that. So that concludes my, my seed tag examples. Um, I can go through one more section with you guys. Um, I can go through the certifying process a little, in a little bit more detail. So I'll minimize this screen and I will um, jump back over to the cover crop worksheet itself and we can talk about certifying the practice. So there's a couple different ways we can certify the practice. Uh, we can hopefully enter the information like I just went through with you guys on the seed tag. We can enter that information and I have an example already filled out here for you. It's one of the, I think it was um, maybe example number three. They had this information on there. Uh, we went over here, it was drilled. We have the number of acres, the total pounds that was seeded. Um, this is the percent of the NRCS full seeding rate. Um, in this example, it was over the 100%. So we can go out now and we can do our field check and we can make sure, um, uh, there's a couple different reasons for doing the field check. We can see how each of these individual species did in the mix, you know, give us some, some insight on when we're doing future planning with producers, uh, which species are doing the best. Um, we, can, we can evaluate um, the growth of those. Uh, we can double check that the field actually got seeded. Uh, we can um, give a rough estimate of how many acres were seeded and we can uh, verify that with the producer. Um, so we're gonna go to the field and we're gonna do those things. We're gonna come down here to the certification section and we have a few options. We can um, certify that this seeding was verified using the seed tags, full seeding rate. We can, we can grab this number from right up there, the percent of the full seeding rate, 104.7, put that in there and we can put the date, whatever date you happen to go to the field, we can put that in in the section here. Uh, that would conclude um, and verify that that seeding was, we can certify that seeding. So let's, uh, I'll go through another example. What if the, the seeding did not meet 100% of our full seeding rate? So the seed was put on a little bit thinner than it was supposed to be. The seeding did not make the 100%. So we have a few options at this point as well. We can go to the field and we can, you can see here in the drop down, there's a, basically three different methods. We can use the percent cover, we can use plants per square foot, or we can do a clipping of the biomass. So first of all, I'm gonna refer and go over the the uh, percent cover with you. So to evaluate the percent cover, we're gonna go to the field and we're gonna randomly select three different locations. And this is all explained in the tech note. So you don't have to memorize this or write this down. Uh, we can go through, maybe I can just uh, share my screen, that portion of the screen with you here. And I can show you what I'm referring to. So right here, I'm on page 12 of our cover crop tech note, general guidelines to determine stand success. Here's the information it takes to certify the practice, seed tags, um, looking for the 85%. We need a receipt or invoice to document the total pounds that were purchased. Uh, we need to know which fields were seeded and how many acres of those seeds, of those fields got seeded. Uh, in recent times, we've had a lot of prevent plant. We've had a lot of drowned out areas. Um, it it's pretty common for the entire field not to get seeded. So we wanna know how many acres of each 
beach field did get seeded and then the date that that was accomplished and then we also need to know if it was drilled or broadcast so like i mentioned earlier um, it's always good information to know what the drill got set at and what the drill actually got accomplished as far as um, pounds per acre and then another good thing to know is what was the drill spacing and you, you can either ask the producer that or we'll, we're going to evaluate that when we go out there to do our field check so either way so um, that's our our certification process um, if any times if any items two through six above were not met, then we can go out and do a field check. We can randomly sample three locations throughout the field. Sampling can be done on a one foot square, uh, basically 12 by 12 inches, uh, like a PVC um, rec uh, square that's put together. I've seen that. We can use a range hoop. Um, what works pretty good is to lay down uh, two um, grazing sticks in an L fashion, and that you can estimate your 12 inch square that way. Um, so those are a couple of the different methods you can use to, to come up with uh, your sampling area. And then we want to, um, if we're going to use the, the percent cover, like I mentioned, um, we want to look straight down. When we're in the field, we want to look straight down at the ground and try to estimate what percent uh, of the ground is showing or what percent is covered by the, the biomass of the cover crop. So we need 40% um, cover, uh, cover to uh, use this method to certify the practice. So there's a couple helpful hints I can also show you. There's an app uh, available, a free app put together and, and put out by Oklahoma State University. Um, it's very easy to download, free to download, um, and it works pretty good for using this, uh, for helping you assess this, this percent cover option. It's called Canopy O. So this is what the app looks like. It's a free download, works very well. Um, and you can take take that to, to help you evaluate what your cover crop uh, percent residue or percent biomass cover is. So that app is pretty helpful. I would encourage you guys to use that to uh, go ahead and download that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your phone and you're gonna take a picture using this app and you need to be at least two feet above the top of the canopy cover. So somewhere around shoulder height uh, works pretty good. So you can still see your phone. You can still make sure you're getting a good square picture. Uh, you're gonna take the picture and then step number two, the app is gonna ask you to adjust or slide around your picture to make sure it matches what the default setting because it's trying to compare green vegetation with the ground below it. You're gonna confirm that. And then uh, lastly, you can add notes. So producer's name. Site number one, site number two, site number three. You can put the field number, uh, field name, the location that you're at. It also takes GPS coordinates for you, but your notes would probably be easiest. Um, once you get that all completed, you can come back to the office and then you, you will need to set up a, a login with this app. And then when you get back to the office, you can just simply go on your computer, log into your account, and you can gather the information that you just uh, re uh, in, in included from your phone you can get all that right from your from your computer so so that app works pretty good for um for doing the percent um cover so if the if the, the seating does meet the percent cover then we can um, use that as a certifying method so we can choose that we can enter the the percent cover and then the date that, that we went out to the field and and did the did the work so that's uh, one method. Another method that we can do, method two, is plants per square foot. So to accomplish this method, we're we're also gonna you know start by filling out, the, getting the the C tags, and we're gonna complete this section and see where we fall within the percent um, cover, and then we're gonna evaluate these species when we go out to the field. Um, but for this section, we're actually going to um, go to three random locations again within the field and we're going to jot this down. Uh, we're going to use either that, that 12 inch square, uh, PVC square, we're going to lay the two grazing sticks in an L fashion or we're going to use the, the range clipping hoop. We can do that as well. Uh, we're going to count the plants um, per square foot. So uh, I mentioned earlier, we want to know what the row spacing is that the drill was set at. If it was drilled, if it's broadcast, then we're just going to simply take the plants that are in our area. But if it was drilled, and the rows are greater than 12 inches, we're only gonna evaluate one foot of row spacing. If it was less than 12, 12 inches, then we possibly will have two rows in there to evaluate or count plants in. So, so we, we wanna know what the row spacing is, so we make sure we get that accomplished. Um, 
uh, correctly. And timing to do any of these things, you know, we probably want to do them when once the cover crops are up pretty well and make sure that all the plants have have emerged that are going to emerge, but we don't want the cover crop to be too large that it's hard to, to navigate through and, and sort through this stuff. So somewhere in that, you know, uh, 30, 30 to 30 day, 45 day mark would probably be a good, good timing to be in depending on your rainfall and your conditions. Um, a couple of cautions for you guys. If they have small grains in their mix, we don't want to count the tillers. We want to try to count individual plants. So the larger the cover crop becomes and the more tillers out, the more difficult it is to tell if it's a tiller or if it was an actual seeded plant. So that would be one reason to get out there a little bit earlier to try to make sure we get um, adequate uh, plants counted. Um, another, uh, another thing to make sure to do when you're counting these plants uh, per square foot, if, um, if weed control or excess moisture was your purpose, then we want to make sure that we add five plants per square foot to our calculation. And that's explained in the, in the tech note as well. I can, there's kind of two sections to this. I can scroll kind of up and down um, under these general guidelines. Uh, it explains it right here in the first bullet point. Um, we want approximately 12 plants per square foot. Number should be increased by five plants per square foot when weed control or excess moisture utilization is the primary purpose. And here's where it talks about the 40% canopy cover. And last, I'm going to talk about the clipping um, of the of the cover crop. So if we use the plants per square foot, we can just put uh, come in here and type that in. However, plants, many plants we ended up finding, and then we're going to put the corresponding date in there as well. So we want to make sure we come back and complete this. So it is going to require you to get in and out of this job sheet a couple times. The first time, complete the the above portion, the calculations portion. Then we're going to go to the field, do our work if, if needed. Um, you know, whatever part is needed, we're always going to go to the field. So there's going to be something that you're going to need to do out there, whether it's just simply to check to make sure the field got seeded, or if you're going to do one of these other certification evaluation methods. Um, East River and West River on the biomass clipping have slightly different numbers. Uh, so we want to make sure you're choosing the correct option that you do on here. And that's explained in the tech note as well. If we are East River, biomass clipping production needs to be at least 1,800 pounds per acre and 1,200 pounds per acre if we're West River. And this is evaluated within six to eight weeks of growth. So not necessarily of date seeded, you know, if we're super dry and nothing emerged for a while, we want to make sure we, we wait for it to emerge and then we're going to come out six to eight weeks of growth and see what our clipping was. And you can follow the, the typical range clipping process for this. You know, we can use that hoop um, if we want. We can use the 12 inch, 12 inch square. We want to make sure we let these plants air dry uh, for a minimum of five days, but typically seven to uh, 7 to four, 14 is more common. Uh, we want to make sure that we stir these plants every probably every day or two to make sure that they don't get really moldy and, and cause issues with our numbers. Um, if we're using the, the range hoop, we're going to multiply our number, our grams by 50. If we're using the 12 inch square, we're going to multiply our grams by 96. Um, and that will give us our, our dry weight number. So when we're doing our clipping, we want to take all the above ground biomass. We don't want to uh, include any of the tubers. If we have brassicas in the mix, we want just the, the above ground vegetation. Um, I think that might conclude my method or uh, my certification process in our video. So once we once we get our numbers after we've air dried that, we can come back and type in you know whatever our numbers happen to be, and then the date that we did the clipping, uh, we can put that in as well. So I'll make sure we always come back and complete the job sheet, check yes or no if we did meet this. You know, there might be times we, we didn't meet it. You know, if we came up short on, on any of these processes that I explained, why well, we just simply not gonna meet the, the purpose. So, or the, not gonna be able to certify that field. So uh, make sure um, we're getting everything completed as we need to. So with that, I thank you for watching my video and have a good day.